Um, so it's a real joy for me to be here today discussing with you the research program that I've been working on um, myself and my team and collaborators on rapid reviews. Um, so this is something that I've been working on for the last seven to eight years and it's uh, a topic that's really, really close to my heart. Uh, super excited about rapid reviews because I do feel that um, they provide knowledge users with a really, really important um, uh, it, it provides them with important information to help them with their decision making. I have no conflicts of interest to declare related to this presentation. So today I hope that we can learn together and um, hopefully by the end of this webinar you're going to be able to differentiate between rapid reviews and systematic reviews. You'll be able to delineate a research program on re rapid reviews and generate ideas for additional methods research. So please pay attention because I'm going to reaching out to all of you in the audience to find some ideas on how can we advance the field and maybe what are some cool things that maybe we can collaborate on together or we can think about in terms of advancing the science and advancing the methods of rapid reviews. And finally, by the end of this webinar, I'm hoping you're going to be able to describe recommendations on the conduct of rapid reviews. And this is from the guide uh, that was uh, put forth by the Alliance World Health Organization on rapid reviews. So this is the international guide that uh, we, we developed together on how to do rapid reviews. Um, so I'm pretty sure everyone here is familiar with the definition of a systematic review. Um, I, we like to use the one, obviously, from the Cochrane Collaboration, which is the leading organization um, for the methods of systematic reviews internationally. Um, so, so systematic review uses very systematic and explicit methods um, to, um, for the conduct of reviews. Um, however, it takes a lot of time and money. So it takes at least 12 months to do a systematic review and it can cost at least $100,000. It really depends on how many studies you've included and on how many outcomes you have because sometimes some of the systematic reviews that we do at my center, for example, will cost you know $200,000 to $250,000 and this is in Canadian money. So when we think about a systematic review, there's a lot more value that is being placed on the accuracy of results. Now, when we think about a rapid review, um, I kind of we'd like to use this definition that's a combination um, of a paper that was published by Kangur and colleagues in 2012, as well as the one put forth by my colleague Shannon Kelly um, in our guide uh, that, that was published by the Alliance WHO. So rapid reviews are a form of knowledge synthesis in which components of the systematic review process are methodologically tailored to produce information in a timely manner for decision making. When we think about rapid reviews, on average, it takes about three months and they cost about $25,000 Canadian. So we're looking at about 25% the time as well as 25% the cost when we compare a systematic review to a rapid review. And when we think about what the value that we place on a rapid review, we place more value on timeliness. And, and also, we, we try to make sure that our results are very, very relevant. So, so rapid reviews in their very nature are kind of like a knowledge translation product because we are doing them for our knowledge users. So perhaps it is a governmental body that has to make a decision and their decision needs to be made within three months. Well, then what we would do is we would do a rapid review and we would methodologically tailor all of our, our methods um, that we would use to make sure that we produce something for them in a very timely and relevant manner for their decision making. So rapid reviews place a lot more value on timeliness and some people argue that they also place a lot more value on relevance. <laughs> 